Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode. If you're new here, hello, I'm Magdalena. And if you're not new here, welcome back. Glad to see that you are here yet again. Today I will be explaining in just a second why I have that yellow bike glove on. But today we'll be doing Rocky, this little Shizu Bichon mix of sorts. And he's a nice little boy when he's not getting groomed. Um, I like him though and he likes me. We have like this kind of weird relationship, but it's okay. We figured it out. And today I'm just going to be going into that because Rocky is moving in June of this year, which is really sad. Um, so I kind of thought that it might be a good idea for his groomer or his new groomer, whoever that may be, to see a video of how I groom Rocky. Because the first couple of times, you know, going and going through this together was pretty rough. So let's just get to it. So Rocky is pretty good for the bath and everything, you know, real basic. Um, I do not do his anal glands in the bath and I do not clean his ears in the bath. I do not clean his ears and I do not do his nails because he takes care of that all by himself. The ears, if there are um, tangles or knots from the hair inside of his ears, I'll just clip it out because usually it'll grow out and then get knotted at the ends. So I'll just snip it short. But I had the bike glove on when I was first picking up Rocky because this is recent that he started biting for getting picked up. I think it's because he's developed some sort of arthritis. It could be in his back or his hips um, or his back legs, his front. It's, I really don't know his neck. He's developed something, I think, internally because we've just been doing the same thing for months and nothing's really changed. So I think he's developed some sort of um, health issue or some type of arthritis, whatever it may be. So usually I will start Rocky's grooming off by only brushing his face and obviously having him hooked up to the groomer's helper because Rocky doesn't bite for me brushing his face, but he will bite if I snag any tangles or if he's just in a bad mood. You know, if I accidentally hit something that I'm not supposed to be hitting, like inside of his ears, he's sensitive about. So I just have him hooked up just in case. And I usually start with doing the stop, which is in between the eyes and on top of the nose, just because I like to clear out his eyes, just so we can see each other and make some eye contact. It's real nice. Um, so now I'll go in with the blade that I use on his head, which is a one snap on comb, which is about a half an inch. And I just skim the top of the head, kind of go making my way down to the cheeks, but I never take the snap on comb to his cheeks or his uh, muzzle because he does not like that. He does not like the vibration on his muzzle. I don't know how Rocky's teeth are doing because I've never checked because I have no desire to go into his mouth because he might not like that. So skim off the top of his head side to side where the part is on the top of his head. You can kind of see that. And then I'll just gently go on the ears again from the top down or from the middle out. I never go along the sides of the ears because that's really scary. So just from the middle out of his ears. And then I'll just scissor the rest of his head short. And then I will demonstrate how I do around his neck and his chin later. So here I am just scissoring Rocky's ear. I just go around the ear leather, just the shape of the ear itself. I don't do anything real fancy here. The goal is to keep him from getting matted and to keep him comfortable and clean because Rocky does not tolerate dematting. He does not like being brushed or having tangles pulled. I don't think any dog really enjoys it, but Rocky does not enjoy it. He doesn't like it. So since I couldn't take the snap-on comb, to his chin or his muzzle. I do a lot of extra scissoring here. I typically will do it with thinning shears just so it doesn't look choppy. Um, but I know some groomers like to go in with their straight shears to take down length. 
and then go in with their thinning shears. I think it really just depends on my mood and Rocky's mood. Um, okay, yeah, here I go, here I go. I did say, you know what, let's take off some length and then we'll clean it up, make it look not so harsh. So here I am just taking off a good amount because he does not like the clippers on his muzzle and his neck. I've tried it and I, I don't agree with it. Just, I do not do it. Just save myself the hassle and jump scares. So scissoring the face and then I'm gonna go back in with thinning shears to clean it up. I do it fairly short because if I don't, he'll get mats on his muzzle and that's no fun. Look at how cute he looks, so cute already. Okay, so here we go, sorry. Putting on the groomer's helper, and I did that because I'm about to put a muzzle on him. Depending on Rocky's mood, he will try to bite the muzzle, but hes it's pretty calm. It's just us today in the salon and his brother, Mickey, who's drying out back. So groomer's helper, just for a little bit more control and quickly putting the muzzle on because if he's in a bad mood, he will try to bite it. So the quicker, the better. And I put the muzzle on here, and I think it's gonna be on for the rest of the grooming because he's just kinda, you never know, you never know. He's a nice boy, but sometimes he's not. And when he's not, he's pretty serious. So muzzle on so I can get around the head and the neck area. He used to fight me for this part a lot, um, around the neck area because, I don't know, It's maybe it's just weird to him. Maybe he had a bad experience, or maybe it's very foreign to him. I'm not really sure what his history is. So, muzzle on, going around the neck, and sometimes I can move the muzzle a little bit out of the way without putting him or I in danger. So, I'm just moving the strap out of the way, holding it, and just going where I need to go around his head. And he's usually pretty okay for this part. So now that I've done around the neck and head, I can put the loop back on and I do hook him back up because he does try to whip around and bite and if I have scissors or a clipper that is running and he, I don't know, gets an ear or some part of his face into what I'm doing, it's not going to be good. So groomer's helper, not too tight but just tight enough and now I do his body and his back legs. I saved the front legs for last because he's really bad for that part and I think that saving the worst for last is is uh, the right way to go for him. Um, I've never tried it the other way around because I don't like starting the grooming off like that. It's just really frustrating and annoying so I do the parts that he's good for first. So he's fine for the body and with Rocky's haircut Something that we do a lot at Gina's Dirty Dog is that we will clipper the body but skim off the ankles. We never go lower than the ankles. We don't clipper the feet except for the pads or unless there's matting in between the toes. But usually we will skim off of the ankles. And this usually, you know, a lot of dogs actually really like this. They actually prefer this because a lot of dogs are sensitive for their feet and a lot of a lot of dogs are really comfortable with you, you know, not doing that. <laughs> not doing that. I remember the shop that I used to work at, I had to, you know, do a lot of shave down, so I would go down 
the entire foot and the entire ankle and all around the leg with the clipper. And you know, I found myself fighting with a lot of dogs because they didn't like that. Yeah, don't like, they don't like it, so I don't do it. We don't do it. And I just kind of gestured there that I do skim off the ankle so you can see it's a little fluffy on his feet and ankles. So here I go with my bravura. I'm doing his prep work, which is gonna be his armpits, the back pads. We save the front pads for last when I get to that point. I do a sanitary area. I do a pretty wide sandy on him because he will get messy. And um, other than that, it's pretty standard. Do a sandy with a 10, his pads with a 30, his back ones and his front ones. And then I will go in with a brush and brush out those ankles. I don't really focus on brushing the body too, too much, just because again, I do a number two and usually there are no tangles. And I'm not really aiming for perfection here with Rocky. The goal is to keep him tangle free, not free and clean and looking, looking tidy, spiffy. But again, not aiming for perfection here. So I'm going in with my curved and my comb, and I think he gets mad at me right there, right there, Rocky. Yep. Um, I've been working on this dog for as long as I can remember, maybe like two, three years, and no matter how many times he's barked or yelled at me, I always jump. I always, always jump. I don't know if it's the pitch. I don't know if it's the way he barks. I don't know what it is, but I always jump. Like some dogs, I can get over it. But for some reason, I'm not, I'm not really sure why. I mean, he has a muzzle on. I know he's not going to bite me. And I know what the deal is here. He knows what the deal is here. So for some reason, it always scares me. So here I am just scissoring up his feet. And I just do them. I do them round and tight. You know, nothing really fancy. And I'll show you how I go about blending in the legs into the fluffy ankles to make them look like one piece. Not like he has like furry boots on or anything like that. All right, so just scissoring his undercarriage and his tuck area, not leaving any extra hair or anything fancy because he doesn't need it. And the goal here is to keep him clean and comfortable. So onto this whole skimming off the ankles, keeping them fluffy um, situation we have going on here. We do this with a lot of dogs at Gina's. We like the fluffy ankles because one, it prevents them from looking like they have chicken feet. And two, a lot of dogs actually don't like getting their ankles and feet clippered with the clippers. Why? Well, there are a number of reasons why. Rocky here, I'm assuming, has been traumatized in his past, um, whether it be by a groomer or a vet or, I don't know, his history for sure. But he fights me for it. He will bite me for it if I clipper his ankles. Um, it could have been someone being too heavy handed. He could have hurt himself in the past. He could just have arthritis. Um, it could be a number of reasons. But when I was working at the salon that I used to work at, I used to have to do shave downs a lot. Like every day I did a shave. I, I did at least three shave downs in a day. And I was always fighting with dogs all the time to get their ankles and feet clipper down. Because with the clippers too, you have to keep 
going over certain spots over and over and over again to get the length that you're trying to achieve and then going in with scissors. And some dogs didn't appreciate that. So leaving the ankles fluffy, it's just less hassle with the dog and they're more comfortable with it. Clearly Rocky has had no problem with me scissoring his ankles. And later in the video for his front legs, you will see that Rocky is in fact not a fan of having his ankles or his legs clippered. So yeah, saves me time, um, scare jumps, and it saves Rocky some energy for later. And here is another diagram, scissored foot cylinder that we've got going on here, just straight down. Um, and then obviously I scissor any hairs that are sticking out of that outline or diagram that I just showed you. And then I'll also show you in the back of his, um, I guess from the rear view, I'll show you what I do for the sides. But usually I just have like the cylinder shape kind of in my head. Okay, fluffing up and I'm just gesturing here where I'm scissoring and I always scissor the foot first because it just kind of gives me a guide as to where I should be scissoring. So point A to point B, point A being at the top from where I'm scissoring where I clippered his hair and then point B down to where the foot is scissored. So anything sticking out of those black lines is what I'm going to be trimming essentially. So from the clippered hair at the top down to the scissored foot at the bottom. Okay, for Rocky's tail, I'll just brush it with the slicker brush. I think I did find one tangle in this tail today and I just clipped it out with my scissors because I don't want to fight him for it. I don't think he wants to fight me for it either. So just snipped it out, slicker brushed it, combed it. Usually I'll take the tail and I'll bring my hands down to the tip of the tail and whatever hair is sticking out past the tip of the tail or my hand, I'll just snip that off. Then I'll hold the tail in its natural position and um, comb the hair down naturally in the way that it wants to lay. And then I'll just scissor the ends and do what's called a quarter moon. Gina likes to call it a, a cleaning pipe or a pipe cleaner, or you can call it a duster, a duster tail, a, a pipe cleaner tail, a quarter moon tail, a short tail, it's short. Okay, my friend, on to my favorite part. Oh, he's so nasty for the front legs, Rocky. Why? We're supposed to be friends. And I'm talking to him like that this the whole time. I mean, I, I've tried everything. I've tried talking to him like a grown, grown woman. Um, but you know, he, it's he's just set in his ways, and it is what it is with Rocky. Sometimes you can reverse these things, but Rocky is is pretty dead set about this um so i'm just running a sucker brush mainly focusing on his feet and ankles because i will have to run a comb through that in order to get a proper haircut out of it once once i'm done clippering so doing his pads he is pretty nasty for it so i just do it really quick and when i go in with my clippers i'm just trying to do as best of a job as i can i'm not making it perfect with my clipper work on him because Clippers are just giving me a general idea of how short I need to be scissoring his legs down so I don't do a perfect job by any means. I just want to get it done and get him off my table and on his way home. Not that I don't like you, Rocky. It's just less stress the better, right? Am I right?
Okay, so on to the scissor work, and I'll show you in this other diagram. I didn't take a really good side profile, but so the black for the front legs is his, I guess, scissored foot, and then the red is that cylinder shape. The curve at the top is his chest, so off his chest onto the legs, and again, just sticking with that cylinder shape that I did on the back. Usually if a dog is getting a longer haircut, we will leave the ankles a little bit fluffier, but in this case, Rocky really doesn't need the extra hair. So just uh, keeping it short, short and sassy. I'm definitely standing at some weird angles here because I'm trying not to block the camera. So if I'm my posture is not great, that's why my cameraman isn't here today because he is at work. He does have his own job. He's not solely my cameraman, unfortunately. But um, yeah, if I'm standing funny, that's why. Okay, for this last bit, just cleaning up his head a little bit because the muzzle can make him look kind of crazy and just blending in the ears and the head to the rest of his body so he doesn't look like a whole bobblehead. And check out those cylindery legs. Wow, Rocky, good boy. I actually really like this dog. As much as he makes me jump and, and kind of just scares me sometimes, I'm always down for a challenge. He's actually a really nice boy. Once he comes off the table, he'll take treats. He'll say hi to you. He's actually super, super nice. He's good with other dogs. Usually there are other dogs on the floor and he'll usually say hi to them. But aside from, from being a little knucklehead on the table about his front legs, you know, I don't know his history again, you guys. So other than that, he's a real nice boy. I'm always down for a challenge. And when whenever I get a new customer like this or a dog that has issues like this, there's always a story behind it, whether it be, you know, from another groomer, from another from a vet, from a person in their life. There's always something behind the there's always a reason behind the behavior. Kind of just like people. Ooh, getting raspy over here. Kind of just like people. You know, there's always reasons for people's behavior, whether it's a mental thing or history, trauma, what have you. So, Rocky and I have really grown to like each other, kinda. Um, <laughs> and I will miss this little guy. He's so sweet and you can kinda see his brother in the back 
through that little window. All right, guys, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, or even some concerns, leave a comment in the comment section down below and I'll try to get back to you ASAP. If you want to message me in private, I'll leave my email down in the description below as well as my other social media handles. And like, subscribe if you liked what you see. Stay tuned until next week. I post videos every single Monday. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye.